Hey go fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Before we jump into today's video, give me your mailbag questions down below using the hashtag Eagles. Are there any players you would want the Eagles to maybe trade for or go out and sign? Ask those questions down below using the hashtag Eagles for a mailbag video in the upcoming days. All right, so we're going to go ahead and break down the biggest news of the day, which most of you guys have seen, but if you have not, if I clicked on this video wondering what the heck happened, well, Brandon Brooks, the Eagles' star right guard, has officially torn his Achilles. He will be out for the entire 2020 season. An absolutely massive, massive blow for what has been one of the best right guards in the National Football League. I mean, you can, you can not debate the fact that Brandon Brooks is the top three, probably a top two right guard in the entire NFL. And, of course, anchors down the right side of the Eagles' offensive line alongside, of course, Jason Kelsey at center and then Lane Johnson on our, our, at right tackle. The big thing here for Brandon Brooks, not just, of course, Doug, for the 2020 season, the list of injuries are now adding up. So he was already working back from his dislocated shoulder, which of course had him you know, miss the entire final quarter of the 2019 season. But you got to go back to the 2019 playoffs, the 2018 year. On the road at the Saints, he tore his Achilles back then as well. Worked like crazy to get back on the football field and was able to play week one and play at a very, very high level. But the big news is, of course, the Eagles have a massive hole at right guard and they need to go out and get, they need to go out and find somebody to go ahead and replace Brennan Brooks. We'll start with what Brooks said on Twitter. He officially put this out there. You see it on your screen. Quote, so I guess now that the news is out, yes, I tore my other Achilles, but when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I'll be back and better than ever. Appreciate the love. And so, of course, this is partially good news because it was not the same Achilles. Normally, you tear the same Achilles back to back. That can be entirely career ending. So Brooks will be able to come back after the 2020 season, but it still is a big blow, obviously, for the Eagles offensive line, which with Brandon Brooks is one of the best offensive lines in the entire National Football League. I mean, yes, you're going to start Andre Dillard at left tackle. That's the big question mark there before the Brooks injury. But Salem Ali was considered one of the better guards in the NFC. Kelsey, one of the best centers in the entire NFL. Brooks, like we talked about, one of the best guards in the National Football League. And then Lane Johnson is arguably the best right tackle in the NFL. So now you have a massive hole. And the question is, what will the Eagles do? And that's the whole point of this video. I want to break down exactly what the Eagles can do and what they should do do at the guard position. Before we do that though, what is your panic level for this injury? Your panic level in Philadelphia right now with the Brooks injury, give me a scale. 1 to 10 down below, give me your number. I would say right now for me, probably a 6 or a 7. It's a big blow. We're going to break down exactly how the Eagles can fix that here in just a second. All right, so you've given me your panic level and you're probably wondering, Thomas, how do we fix this? Who plays right guard? What are the Eagles options? So I want to start with the internal options at right guard and then work out to the free agent options as well. We'll start with the most likely internal option and that is Matt Pryor, who of course filled in for Brandon Brooks starting in week 12 and then later on towards the, the uh, tail part of the 2019 season after Brooks, of course, you know, went on IR with the injured right shoulder. And he wasn't bad by any means. You go back and watch the film, he wasn't Brandon Brooks because Brandon Brooks is like one of the best right tackle or right guards in the, in the National Football League. But when uh, Pryor filled in at right guard, the Eagles were fine, and the Eagles were okay, and the Eagles were able to continue to run the football and protect protect Carson Wentz at a, a, a decently high level. The problem is, is that my, uh, Matt Pryor, of course, is a 2018 sixth-round pick out of TCU, and he's only seen action in a few games, and so you go from just a kind of a fill-in backup right guard to actually starting at right guard is a very big difference. Your other internal options, again, there are a lot of options currently on the Eagles, both practice squad and on the actual roster. Jack Driscoll, the 145th over overall pick in the NFL draft. A lot of people are saying he could assume that role, and he could, but of course he can't really get in front of Eagle coaches and, you know, the Eagle offensive line coaches because there's no mini camps happening right now. So the Eagles don't exactly know what they have in Jack Driscoll at this moment. So maybe when you get to training camp, Driscoll could end up being that guy. We got some other options here, but none of them just, none of them jump out and make a lot of sense. It will be an open competition at right guard unless they actually go out and sign somebody. But right now, if they were to keep everything internal and promote from within, I think Matt Pryor would make a lot of sense and he would probably be the pick unless, and we say this again, unless you see Jack Driscoll and he balls out in training camp and plays well, but remember, he's a rookie, so the odds of a rookie playing well at right guard, a later round draft pick, are a little bit lower than someone who's already been there in Matt Pryor. Be sure to subscribe to Philadelphia Eagles now as we, of course, have the news, and then we break it all down here as well. This is a perfect example, this video, of what we do here at Philadelphia Eagles now. So if you're brand new, go ahead and click that red subscribe button. We'd greatly appreciate it. And also, in case you didn't realize, uh, Father's Day is this Sunday. Yes, this Sunday. Now, Father's Day, not as big of a deal. Mother's Day. We talk about that. You got to make sure you get mama gift. But 
Come on, you gotta help out the dads too there in your life. And so go to chatsports.com slash Eagles Dad and you of course get your gift in time for Father's Day. There's t-shirts, there's hats, there's jerseys, all are in the link down below. Chatsports.com slash Eagles Dad, the place to get your dad the perfect Father's Day gift. And of course, make it a Philadelphia Eagles uh, themed gift, related gift, that way he can rock it hopefully at a future Eagles game in Lincoln Financial Field. Chatsports.com slash Eagles Dad. Okay, so we just broke down, obviously, Brandon Brooks injury. It's a big deal. I mean, it's a huge deal. Now, who are your internal options? We talked about Matt Pryor. Now we have to get into external options, and this is what everyone's going to talk about right now. Who can we go out and sign to replace Jason or to uh, replace um, Brandon Brooks? So here are, are a couple of options. The first one you are hearing and seeing if you are on Twitter is Jason Peters. A lot of people are saying that the Eagles must sign Jason Peters and have him play right guard because Jason Peters would be a great right guard. Is that true? Let's break that down here for a second. Here's the problem. The Eagles, of course, did not re-sign Jason Peters. They chose to let him walk in free agency. They were rumored to be re-signing him last month, and guess what? They never did. I think they're confident in Andre Dillard being the starting left tackle, the former number, the former first-round draft pick, uh, taking at number number 21 overall. So they were in talks. It never happened to anything. They didn't re-sign him. And now the 38-year-old free agent is still available, and people think you can just plug him in at right guard. Problem is, Jason Peters has never played right guard in Philadelphia ever in his life. He's always played left tackle, and that's a big difference in terms of left tackle to right guard. A lot of people will say, oh, Thomas, he's a Pro Bowl left guard. He's one of the smartest offensive linemen out there. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He can move over easily. I hope so. If you sign him, then he better, but there's no guarantee that he's going to be able to go ahead and just move over to right guard because despite the fact offensive line is offensive line, those are two very different positions. Now, he would be the optimum choice because he's familiar with Carson Wentz. He's familiar with the offensive line. He loves Philadelphia, but can he actually move to right guard? I don't think anyone actually knows that answer besides Jason Peters, and would he want to move to right guard is a very, very real question. The other problem with Jason Peters is he couldn't stay healthy at left tackle. That's the main reason why Philadelphia moved on from him because they wanted some consistency at the left tackle spot. The bodyguard was unable to really play in 16 games for each of the last couple of years, even dating back to the Super Bowl year as well when Vitae filled in very, very well at left tackle. And with Vitae gone, it looks like they wanted to get someone in there at left tackle who could actually be consistent. So that consistency issue still rolls over there to the right guard. So that's the problem with Jason Peters. I would love Jason Peters back in an Eagles uniform. I think the Eagles would love him back in an Eagles uniform. But can he actually make the switch to the right guard is a question that only the Eagles coaching staff and and, uh, and and Jason Peters will actually be able to answer. So we'll wait and see what happens with that one. What do you guys think? Like this video, you guys think the Eagles should go ahead and re-sign Jason Peters. You think they should re-sign Jason Peters and put him at right guard? Give this video a thumbs up right now. Okay, so the other options here are the non, you know, internal and then of course the non-Jason Peter options. The best one that I can actually find as I go through the list of free agent guards is Larry Wofford. So Larry, Larry, Larry Warford, of course, was a former exclusive right guard in the National Football League. When I say exclusive right guard, it means there are a lot of players we're going to talk about a little bit later who have played different positions on the offensive line. Larry has played all of his career at right guard. It was actually drafted by Jim Schwartz at a Detroit line in 2013 and won the Pro Football Focus Offensive Rookie of the Year. He had three straight Pro Bowl seasons with the New Orleans Saints. They eventually let him go because he cost a little too much money, but he was the 30th rated guard out of 89 guards by Pro Football Focus in 2019. So last year, he was rated decently high towards the top half of the entire NFL in terms of guards. He's only 29 years old and he's played 13 games in each of the last seven seasons. Now, again, why is he a free agent? Well, he cost too much for the New Orleans Saints. They wanted to go ahead and draft somebody who would be cheaper, and he lacked diversity, according to the Saints, in terms of being able to play multiple roles. But in Philadelphia, you don't need him to play multiple roles. You just need him to go ahead and play one, and that is at right guard. So Larry, to me, makes a lot of sense in terms of being the right guard that they could go ahead and pick up right now off the free agent market who would not only be familiar with a guy like Jim Schwartz, has played exclusively at right guard, and has actually been good, let's say very good, three Pro Bowl seasons in New Orleans, recently, whereas the other guys on the list I'm going to show you here in just a second have not recently been as good as Larry has been. So if I was going to go in terms of my perfect pick, this is the guy that I would go 
to right now in the free agent market who the Eagles could sign to hopefully fill the gap there at right guard left by Brandon Brooks. Here are the other options on the list, and a lot of websites have this list, so you can kind of Google options for the Eagles and find these guys here. Ronald Leary is a former Cowboy, so you can go ahead and pick him up. He was the 18th best guard in the National Football League last year, according to Pro Football Focus. Problem is, he's had a ton of injuries, and one of the main reasons why he's no longer a Dallas Cowboy. Mike Person, of course, the former uh, 49er, and I believe he was a Falcon as well. He's old, he's 32, and he was the 57th highest rated guard in the entire National Football League last year, according to Pro Football Focus. And one of the main reasons why that was, because he was so old, and he was let go by the 49ers. Kyle Long, another name that keeps getting thrown around out there, which to me makes absolutely no sense. He's 31 years old. He retired this year. He was in talks with the Jets, but eventually retired. So unless Chris Long, his brother, the former Eagle pass rusher, can convince him to come to, to Philadelphia, there's no way that Kyle Long is, is going to be an Eagle. He's had a lot of injuries in his career as well, which of course derailed it towards the latter part of his tenure. And then of course, Josh Klein, the 52nd rated pro, uh, guard in 2019, according to Pro Football Focus. He's been a little more consistent, rumored at one point to be a trade option for the Rasul Douglas trade to the uh, to the uh, Patriots, I think. But again, he's not played a lot of games, or he has played a lot of games recently, but has not been ranked and has not been uh, as, as good as they say, according to Pro Football Focus, in their total guard ranking. So there you go. I want to get a whole video breaking down the Brandon Brooks thing because, yes, this is a massive deal. This is a very big deal for Philadelphia because protecting Carson Wentz and creating running lanes for Miles Sanders is one of the main focuses of the Eagles offense going into the 2020 season. Does this completely de derail the Eagles Super Bowl chances? No. You'll see a lot of people on Twitter and in the comments saying, oh my goodness, we're doomed. No, the Eagles are going to be terrible. They can't protect wins. No, they'll be just fine. They've been able to overcome big injuries in the past. Think Jason Peters in 2017. The question is, who will they get in there to replace him at right guard? Could it be Pryor? You know, an in-house move could be uh, Driscoll, the rookie. Could it be Jason Peters or somebody else? A lot of options there, of course. Let me know what you guys think in terms of what the Eagles should do down below in the comments section. There you go. All time we have for today here on Philadelphia Eagles now. It's a rough day for Eagle fans, but hang in there. I promise Brooks is going to be back and better than ever. The question is, again, who will they fill in at that spot? Hopefully they get this right the way the Eagles season, as I think it will be, will be able to stay on track and they go ahead and win the NFC East, as I have predicted. All time we have for today, again, for our Philadelphia Eagles now, I'm Thomas Montz signing off for the rest of your day.